guys, it's Jen. Today I'm going to show you four ways to use coconut milk all in vegan recipes. Coconut milk is really one of my most favorite milks of all. Why? Because it's lactose free, it's rich and fluffy and creamy. Plus, you can pretty much use it in anything. And my first recipe is hot chocolate. Hot chocolates are amazing for the winter time and I also love snuggling up in my bed with a book and a hot chocolate. So let's get started. I'm going to first of all place the water in my pot and then turn up my heat. And then we're gonna head over and we're just gonna wait for the water just to simmer just for a little bit before adding the cacao in because otherwise it kind of separates because cacao has a lot of oil in it which makes it so rich and thick. So we're just gonna boil that water a little bit. So it's time to put the cacao in. So I'm just gonna sprinkle it all in there. So now I'm gonna put the coconut sugar in and you can use coconut sugar or maple syrup or xylitol if you're trying to go a little bit less sweet. And that's gonna make a nice smooth texture with the cacao. And then it's time to add our coconut milk. Mmm, yummy, super smooth. This is really what makes the hot chocolate so creamy. Finally, we're gonna put some vanilla essence in. And I like to put about two teaspoons in. And this just adds a nice, fresh blend with the chocolate. I mean, who doesn't like chocolate and vanilla? Yummy. Okay, great. So I'm just gonna let that really cook for a couple of minutes. And now for the best part, you could simply take your hot chocolate from the pot here, but what I really like to do is I like to blend it so it creates a bubbly, thick texture and all the ingredients really get to come together. And we'll just pour it in. Here we go. As you can see, we have a nice little froth on top there. Just pour it in. And now I'm just gonna take a couple of marshmallows. They taste really wonderful when they melt inside the hot chocolate. And I love these marshmallows because they are vegan. So here we go, we've got our hot chocolate ready to go. Oh, wow, so good. And now I'm going to introduce you to coconut chia parfait, which is awesome for breakfast as well as dessert. Now this recipe actually happens in two parts. You're going to create a chia pudding to start with. Now if you saw it in my previous video, I created a really yummy chia pudding. But for the purpose of this one, all you really need is some chia seeds, some coconut milk and some vanilla. Pop it in the fridge, get it out in the morning, it will look exactly like that. Now let's layer it up. So I'm gonna take the granola. And I like to really put this in a clear glass just so you can see how beautiful it is when we layer it all up together. So we create a bottom layer. That's our first layer of granola. Then we head over to our pudding. Kind of looks like ice cream, doesn't it? And we just mash it down to create that layer there. And then we add another layer of granola followed by yet another layer of chia seeds. And my favorite is to add some berries on top, give it a little bit extra flavor, a little bit more spice, and then some maple syrup. And this creates a really nice dish. If you wanna add a drizzle of coconut milk on top, that's a really great way to go as well. And that is our coconut chia parfait. Doesn't it look simply delicious? And now I have a very easy recipe for you, which is coconut cream. And coconut cream is so much better than dairy because you're gonna get your healthy fats out of the coconut. And it's very easy to make. All you need is a can of coconut milk. And you're gonna pop it in the fridge overnight and don't shake it. That's like number one rule, do not shake. Once we take it out of the fridge the next day, you're gonna notice a nice crust on the surface of the can and that's your yummy cream. And all you'll do is you'll take your spoon and you'll just dig out your cream. As you can see, there it is, yummy. And also around the edges, you'll find that thick cream as well. And so you just dig it out and you just mash it all together. You can also add in some vanilla or some cinnamon if you want a little extra flavor, or if you just want it simple and plain, the coconut is enough. It's pretty much good to go. You can put it on a cake, you can put it on a scone, a muffin. It's just like whipping cream, you'll enjoy it. And now it's time for my favorite Thai coconut vegetable curry. So the first step is I wanna start preparing the vegetables because they take a little bit longer than the sauce itself. So all I'm going to do is head over to the wok 
and I'll create some heat here. You could also just use a deep pan as well if you don't have a wok. I'll take some of my coconut oil. As you can see, we're in the coconut theme today. And just pop some inside the pan, just so that those vegetables don't stick to the pan. And we'll let that melt in. And I love coconut oil, it's a high heat oil. It's also really yummy and tasty. It's got a sweet flavor, which really combines nicely in the curry. And now I'm gonna add the onions. I have it on a low heat, and I'll add the garlic as well. Garlic can take a little bit longer to cook. So I like to really work these into the dish to start with. And while I let that take place, I'm gonna move over to our pot and start working on our lovely sauce. So I'm gonna take the coconut milk and just simply place it in the pot. I'm gonna put our heat on. And so both of these are going to cook simultaneously. We're gonna keep an eye on this as we work on the other part to the dish. And now it's time to add my Thai curry paste. And I really love this particular brand. It's from Thai Kitchen. And it's really awesome because it is super fresh. It's got lemongrass in it, it's got peppers in it, it's got lime, and it really adds a nice flavor. Red actually is milder than the green paste. So depending on what you want in your diet, I like it a little bit more mild. I'll take between two to three teaspoons of this paste. And then let's head over to our lemons. And I love lemons, I can never have enough lemons. So I'm gonna just add one whole lemon into this. You could even add two or three if you're really into lemon, which I do sometimes. Okay, and just checking back on our wok, making sure that we're stirring around. You can see that there's getting some brown glaze on the onions. Great, and then I'm just gonna check on our lovely broth over here. And as you can see, it's kind of like a salmon color. I'm gonna now bring over the string beans and some broccoli and cauliflower and some tomato as well. Now I like putting tomatoes in curries because tomatoes tend to melt down and create a little bit more of a paste as well. So if you really mash the tomatoes in, you're gonna start to get a nice saucy consistency. And let's add some salt to the vegetables. I'm actually just gonna sprinkle it on top of the vegetables. And salt actually helps draw out the flavor as well. You wanna be careful with salt because sometimes you can overdo it. So as you can see, uh, the vegetables are still a little crisp but getting soft, which is what I'm looking for. I don't like them too soft and soggy in a vegetable curry. I do like a little bit of crunch, so it's a fine line between how much you wanna cook them. The sauce is in a really yummy salmon color, and um, I'm just gonna give it a little try to see what it tastes like. Mmm, this is perfect. Not too spicy, but nice and creamy. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pour in our curry sauce. This looks delightful. So I'm just gonna let this simmer for a while so that all the flavors can start melding together. You can actually really even let this sit for another 20 minutes if you really want to feel it as a broth or if you want to keep the crunch, you can serve it up straight away. You can definitely combine this with rice or quinoa if you want it to be a little bit more hearty. Right now it is in a soup base, which is also wonderful, but I do love putting brown rice with it. And there you go, that's our coconut vegetable curry. I hope you like it. And I hope you've enjoyed these four recipes to use coconut milk. Let us know in the chat below, or if you've got any personal recipes of your own, let us know, we'd love to hear from you. And remember to sign up for thrivemarket.com. Get 25 to 50% off all of your favorite healthy goods. Let's thrive.